Hello and good day. Presenting. Motivational and inspirational quotes. By my favorite pastor in the world, Joel Osteen. Here are now 10 more quotes 711 through 720. Let's get started with number. 711. You can't pray away every difficulty. You can't pray away everything you don't like. If the situation is not changing, then God is using the situation to change you. 712. It starts in your thinking. Nothing will change until you make up your mind that you are not going to accept mediocrity. 713. Pass the small test. Many people do not enjoy God's favor like they should, because they don't pass the small tests. Being excellent may not be some huge adjustment you need to make. It may mean just leaving 10 minutes earlier so you can get to work on time. It may mean not complaining when you have to clean up. It may mean not making personal phone calls on work time just a small thing. Nobody would know it. But the scripture says, it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. If I had put up that water bottle week after week without cleaning it, nobody would have known except God and me. I could have gotten away with it, but here's the key. I don't want something small to keep God from releasing something big into my life. A while back, I was in a store's parking lot, and it was very windy outside. When I opened my car door, several pieces of trash blew out on the ground. As I went to pick them up, the wind caught them and they flew about 15 or 20 feet in different directions. I didn't feel like going over to pick up those scraps. I looked around and there were already all kinds of other trash in the parking lot. I was in a hurry. I came up with several good excuses why I shouldn't go pick them up. I almost convinced myself to let them go. But at the last moment I decided I was going to be a person of excellence and pick up my trash. The scraps had blown here and there. I ended up running all over that parking lot.my mind was saying. What in the world am I doing out here? It doesn't matter let the stuff go. When I finally picked up all of the scattered trash, I came back to my car. I had not realized it. But this couple was sitting in the car next to mine, watching the whole thing. They rolled the window down and said, Hey Joel, we watch you on television each week. Then the lady said something very interesting. We were watching to see what you were going to do. I thought, Oh, thank you Jesus. Whether you realize it or not, people are watching you. Make sure you're representing God the right way. 714. Here's the key. Pulling someone else down will never make you rise higher. Let's be people that celebrate success that learn from those that are ahead, that honor people that have been blessed. 715. I'm a son. I'm blessed, I'm prosperous, and I'm a difference maker. I'm going to set a new standard for my family. 716. Too often, we're holding on to hurts, disappointments, things we don't understand. This poisons our attitude, takes our passion, makes us negative and critical. You have to let it go. Quit going back to it. It's over and done. Move forward. 717. I heard all these birds singing and singing so loud and so cheerful. Little birds were chirping and chirping. Big birds were making a melody. It was like they were having a big party. I wanted to say to them, Hey birds, have you read the newspapers lately? Did you see the stock market last year? You're not supposed to be singing, enjoying life. What's wrong with you? You're acting like everything will be all right. What was it with those birds? They know a secret. They know their Heavenly Father is in control. They know God has promised to take care of them, so they go through the day singing and enjoying life, regardless of the circumstances. That's how to start off each day. Get up in the morning and have a song of praise in your heart. Put a smile on your face. Go out into the day and be determined to enjoy it. The Apostle Paul wrote, Be happy in your faith, and rejoice and be glad-hearted continually, always. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 AMP How long are we supposed to be glad-hearted? How long are we supposed to have a smile on our faces? As long as people treat us right? As long as we feel okay? As long as the economy is up? No, the scripture says, Be glad-hearted continually, always. That means in the good times and in the tough times, when it's sunny and when it's raining. When dark clouds are over your head and you feel like life is depressing and gloomy, always remember that right above those dark clouds the sun is shining. 
You may not be able to see the sun in your life right now, but that doesn't mean it's not up there. It's just blocked by the dark clouds. The good news is, the clouds are temporary. The clouds will not last forever. The sun will shine in your life once again. I in the meantime, keep your joy. Be glad-hearted continually. Don't let a few clouds darken your life. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. That means we all face disappointments, unfair situations, tests, trials, and temptation. But know this, right past the test is promotion. On the other side of every difficulty is increase. If you go through adversity with a smile on your face and a song in your heart, on the other side there will be a reward. 718. Your life is going to follow your thoughts. 719. If you want to make God happy, if you want to put a smile on his face, go to him with boldness, go to him like you know he's proud of you, like you know you deserve to be there, like you know he wants to be good to you. 720. In scripture, Joseph had a big dream in his heart, and when he was a young man, God promised that he would be a great leader and even help rule a nation. But before that dream came to pass Joseph had many adversities. His brothers were jealous of him. They threw him into a deep pit. They left him there to die. But Joseph understood what it says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18. The things that are seen are temporary. One translation says the things that are seen are subject to change. But the things that are unseen are eternal. The things we see with our physical eyes are only temporary. But the things we see through our eyes of faith are eternal. Yet too often we allow temporary things to discourage us and cause us to give up on our dreams. Anything that doesn't line up with the vision God placed in your heart should be seen not as permanent but as subject to change. Joseph understood this principle. When he was thrown into the pit, he knew that his fate did not line up with the vision God had painted on the canvas of his heart.